Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Ruth Nordstrom. I am the studio manager at Suho uh, with the design team. Um, and today I wanted to run through with you um, some of the tools that we use, particularly in the 10 star challenge, uh, Design Matters 10 star challenge. Um, to reach the 10 stars which we've done over a number of years um, and also how we've gotten to the point of actually building a 10 star house um, certified and some of the tricks that we've learned along the way and some of the lessons in terms of high performance housing. Um, so I hope you enjoy this. i um, also like to welcome uh, Marco who is from Hubble um, who will also be in the chat today, so if you have any questions you can pop them in there. Um, he'll be supporting uh, particularly on Hubble and RoboRater, uh, if there's any more questions on that. Um, and I can try to answer anything at the end also. So, thank you. Uh, so, a bit of a background on Suho and um, our 10 Star Vision. So, in 2016 we entered the uh, what was then the uh, BDAV 10 star challenge and we won. Um, in 2018 we also entered and we came runner up and this is the house that we have chosen to build. Um, it is a very beautiful house, it's nearly finished and I can't wait to take everyone through there. Um, but um, undertaking these uh, 10 star challenges and then also building the house um, very much aligns with Suho's vision. So. Um, Suho's vision is essentially to um, facilitate that change in industry. Um, it's, it's about transitioning um, Australia to a more sustainable built environment. One way that we can do that is actually by having this 10 star house built and using it as a tool for education, um, empowering owners about what sort of questions to ask their builders. And I'm hoping through this presentation you'll see um, not only the tools that we've used to achieve that and um, you know critically analyse as we go through to better ourselves, um, but also to prove a point about that there are a lot of buildings out there that are very poor performing um, and quite often that is because there's not enough insulation or it's not built correctly uh, in terms of orientation and so forth. Um, so I hope you enjoy this little snippet that I'll give you. Um, so what we're going to try to do today is um, essentially use the 10 star house as an example. So the one on the left, which won in 2016, is a great example of 10 stars. Um, however, it's fairly small, compact. We didn't push the um, design further to see if it can be constructed on site and what lessons we could learn about that, you know, the general disconnect between design and construct. Uh, especially on high performance houses, like how do we achieve those different layers and so forth. Um, so the building on the right was the runner-up building. Um, it's got a very different feel inside of the building. Um, it's really trying to push these really large open spaces to fracture that light in there and make the building feel a lot more open and connected uh, with the Australian lifestyle, that indoor-outdoor feel. Um, also better for mental health and um, hopefully better in terms of using the building passively and the volumes. Um, and along the way we did learn a few tricks in First Track 5 about um, you know, what some of these software tools do prefer, uh, which is also something that we can use this house now that it's built to actually feed back to the people that make this software and hopefully change it. So in any... Um, analysis that we do in the 10 star challenges we um, also look at other tools in the industry um, like e-tool we looked at in terms of what the LCA assessment was for the um, 10 star challenge and it came out fairly well um, we haven't as yet in terms of this build product looked at that um, but that that might be something that we do down the track but what was more important on these um, this this experiment that we did was actually um, achieving the objectives. So the first one, uh, getting 10 stars, getting it certified 10 stars. So that, that is a feat in itself. Um, and then looking at, you know, the cause and effect of certain things that we do uh, on the envelope and the internal programming of the spaces inside um, that we need to also address. Um, what this does and what the help of all of this software does for us is give us enough information that we can um, essentially do an, an expanded workflow that shows um, to people that are doing regulation, 
let's say, with the six star ratings um, in the NCC uh, or the CSIRO in the way that they analyse data and so forth, um, give them enough information to make that change because Australia is well behind um, and I'm very passionate about making sure that everyone has this fundamental right to access such um, good quality housing. Uh, theoretically it's not hard, you don't have to um, have elaborate constructions necessarily, it's just got to be done smart, um, size wise design is good as well, so there's a lot of lessons that we can bring out of this. In terms of the smattering of different tools, um, and I'm talking software that we've used on the 10 star house and on most of our workflows, um, it it essentially aligns with the design process in this format. So um, in, in terms of site analysis, when someone comes to me and um, they either have or haven't chosen a site yet, we have a look at the site and figure out in terms of the planning guidelines um, how much building space we can put on there, whether that's feasible. If it's too much, then we might reduce it. Um, so by looking at um, council planning guidelines like the 60% site coverage or something like that, uh, we can get a really good idea of a mass that we can start with. Um, at this point, I automatically would jump into Hubble and start um, trying to work on this mass and massage it. And I'll give you an example of that shortly. Um, going into concept design and um, the other phases, we also expand on that and start using tools to check the feasibility of increasing uh, window sizes for certain design aspects or um, you know hallway widths or something like that or unconditioned spaces and if they're um, huddled together so that we can get the performance from this mass um, heightened from the word go rather than chasing our tail all the way through the design process which also has repercussions in terms of estimation and cost reduction so it's very important to um, get heavily into this to start off with, uh, make it a, a design tool as well, so not just an add-on, um, get yourself well versed in um, the cause and effect of sustainable design outcomes from the word go using these tools. Very, very simple to operate. Um, in one of the other webinars that I had, I did actually have a question um, in terms of how long does it take to learn first rate five versus how long does it take to learn Hubble? Um, so in, in my own experience and speaking from that, it took me um, three weeks full time under heavy training to learn first rate five adequately. And then over a couple of months, I was still being watched and um, trained in first rate five and it's a little nuances. Hubble, um, you can learn in about half an hour. Um, and it, what it actually does is uses artificial intelligence to um, tap into the back end of first rate and give you um, statistics essentially, it's probability, it's math, so you can trust it um, in, in the same way that we trust science in building sciences, so it's a very valuable tool. Um, going into design development, we also use um, things like Woofy to expand on the constructions that we're putting inside First Rate 5 or Accurate, um, and in the case of the 10 star house, we also started using things like Roborator, which is where this uh, image comes from. Uh, it's just an example image that we've had floating around for ages showing um, that Roborator can also tap into the back end of the first rate 5 file um, in our instance on the 10 star house and do um, hundreds of simulations in terms of um, you know how much do we have to increase the system values on the windows to get the required star rating and so forth. Um, even through the later stages of um, even in construction, we're still going back to those files uh, like in Accurate on our current 10 star house, um, checking um, if there's any variance for certain um, design or construction decisions that we have, um, and also making sure that we're adhering to that certification as well. So first rate five and Hubble is the main front end of our process. Um, and what I'm going to try to demonstrate to you very quickly in a couple of slides is um, how I use the tool. Um, not everyone might use it the same way, um, but it's it's super simple. So um, as a designer, we all know that there's council requirements and we start looking at the site coverage. So say a client has come in and they've given us a site, we look at this volume and we say it's this big. Um, what we start doing is cutting it up. So we say, okay, of that space, we have a certain amount of coverage that we're allowed in terms of the encumbrances on that site. 
Um, from there, I also jump into something like Revit in the conceptual massing or just in Revit in the general drafting space and actually start building up volumes. So the advantage of doing this concurrently with Hubble is that I can get a fairly accurate um, wall to window ratio and the areas that I can then put in Hubble and do a really quick analysis and I'll, I will show you Hubble in a sec. Um, so once we've got that form we can start massaging it. Um, there are a few tools in Revit at the front end that um, are very good just in planning. I don't know how accurate they are down the track for um, you know proper daylighting and so forth but we we still use them occasionally um, so the bottom right image was essentially the 10 star site uh, right at the beginning um, before we changed a few aspects in the design um, that's just using Revit and some daylighting to see how far back in that floor plate that we could get um, the top right image is actually one that was done in design builder for the 10 star challenge and that gives us a much more accurate level of the daylight factor within those spaces. Um, and what we discovered by using both Revit and um, things like Hubble and First Rate 5 in this conceptual massing stage uh, is that, uh, especially when you're looking at volumes inside the space, um, you can really push First Rate 5 beyond just purely a compliance tool. Um, so when I had the First Rate 5 file from the 10 star house, the one that we've built now, what I started doing is working on that volume in the living space. So hopefully you can see my cursor here, but this is the living space here. Um, originally we just had a flat roof, um, so flat ceiling, which is very, very common in um, a lot of 10 star houses that I've seen or high performance houses that I've seen overseas and we really um, pushed the volume of that living space to aid in um, the, you know, the confection that we wanted inside of that space using the passive um, solar principles. Um, worked great in first rate five. Um, I have that quite commonly in a lot of houses that we design, um, especially in living and dining um, and occasionally bedrooms. If we're using volume in those spaces a bit more, um, generally the building is performing better, uh, better and then we can get a um, better glazing um, outcome as well. Uh, by glazing outcome I mean that we want that connection to the outdoors, we don't want to just have tiny little windows, we, we want to have that happy balance between sustainable design and beautiful sort of architectural and uh, building design aesthetics that we want as designers. Uh, roof colour can also be checked as well. So from this stage then I would normally jump into Hubble, so hopefully this doesn't um, stuff up here but I've got Hubble just in the background. What I've done just by example is show you um, how I use Hubble um, and this is actually where the 10 star house is um, actually situated so I've pre-populated this um, just to give you some example but essentially a, a 10 star house um, in the Adelaide uh, flat plains generally needs a concrete, concrete slab on ground we know that um, looking up into the hills, generally if we were to take the current house that we've built and actually build it in the hills or build it in different climate zones, we'd get a, a vastly different result. Um, and I will demonstrate that in a sec too. But firstly in Hubble, um, so I can evaluate um, based on the basic material selections in Hubble before I um, am getting to the point of optimising to 10 stars basic simple construction that will give me a very rough idea of the best glazing to wall ratio, you know, how many windows do they need shading and so forth. And you can see just by using this that we can get a very good star rating by having a, a well insulated envelope. So this is just purely looking at a simple fibre cement with additional um, insulation. Uh, roof colour is light so that it reflects, um, so again in here you can test that out. Um, ceiling insulation, I've chosen R5. Um, concrete slab on ground so there's no floor insulation. Um, and roof insulation, there, there are a couple of options there. In this instance I've chosen anti-glare foil but you might not. Um, so the, the 10 star house in terms of the square meterage and the footprint is around about 110 so I've, I've estimated about 116 um, and the wall area on that um, you can tell by the star rating um, the wall to floor area is actually quite a good ratio so we've got 185 uh, meters squared of wall 
Um, general rule that I just do in here anyway is I, I automatically just put a 450 eave around um, because I know on the south of the building it doesn't make a difference. Um, but the east and the west, when we're starting to look at, um, particularly in this next window and when we get into um, first rate five, sorry, someone's beeping outside. <laughs> Um, especially when we get to first rate five and we put external shading especially on western windows in Adelaide it makes quite a big difference um, so here we have um, the window surface area so flat surface area that I've worked out from the elevations um, and from the massing model and then also I can work out what sort of very rough system value I want so the advantage of that is also that I can then um, automatically start that um, you know cost analysis process as we go. Um, the point I wanted to prove about both this tool and first rate five which you'll see in a video soon is that there are a lot of buildings out there that we know um, are performing a lot less than six stars um, with the government introducing this 25k to kickstart the construction industry just in this last week um, I do have a concern that there are a lot of builders out there that aren't going to build to such a quality standard and you can see that just by having a, a well insulated envelope um, in different orientations you can still get a really really good result on your star rating. Um, so the advantage of Hubble is that I can actually rotate the building with this rotate button for the windows and essentially that's telling me what the difference is. This particular 10 star house was designed for the north. But if I started um, rotating it to a different direction, I'm still getting almost seven stars. Um, I think this was south facing. Um, no, that one's south facing. That one might have been west facing. So again, seven stars essentially. And this one, 7.42, uh, which I think that was east facing with the 10 star example. So I don't have all the insulation in there that we have in a 10 star example, but it's a very good tool to show that, that there is a lot of um, room for improvement in the industry and having tools like this from the word go, especially when um, clients are planning, is uh, really, really valuable. So I'll just minimise that for a second. We'll go back to the presentation on here. So you can see that I changed that orientation um, and the star value remained very, very similar, um, well above the um, six star benchmark. Um, so then when we're going a little bit further, we start looking at other tools to um, zoom into that finer detail, essentially. So with the... Um, if this plays all right so with the original 10 star challenge um, file what I've done to try to prove to you that um, the insulated envelope is so um, utterly important in design I've taken the old 10 star um, file that we had from the 10 star challenge and actually reverse designed it for you um, so you can see the adjustments that I'm making in the video there on the right um, so even with the 10 star file uh, in different climate zones we were still able to get um, in Adelaide, Perth and Sydney 10 stars with this exact same design just changing the climate zone. 9.4 stars in Melbourne um, which is actually quite interesting because um, a lot of the time when we do a design in Adelaide um, Plains and then if that was transferred to the Adelaide Hills the rating would drop. Um, this is actually still um, getting 9.4 stars in Melbourne and Melbourne typically kind of performs a little bit similar to the Adelaide Hills. Um, down in Launceston it drops again so um, crucial here would be that we're looking at um, the highest spec windows that we can to make sure that that whole um, building is insulated well um, and then we're starting to push that a little bit further. So again this, um, this building in Canberra got 9.1 stars just looking at the um, climate zone itself. Um, although I'm showing you a video of the first rate five file, um, what's important to note and what we <laughs> what we do to make it simple for us, we actually use RoboRater that will take this file and um, simulate all these different climate zones for us or in the instance of um, the actual 10 star house that we built we actually used it to optimize windows and tell us what that system value was so that we could go out to market. Um, some other changes that I made on this model um, again just to 
demonstrate how um, important glazing is and the volumes in these space. So um, firstly, right now I'm changing um, one of the drawers to single glazed. Um, I believe I chose a UPVC one. And the next step I did, um, because that was still getting 9.6 stars, um, I changed all of the windows and doors in the house, which was still nine stars. So once, I'm, once again, what I'm trying to um, emphasize is that a lot of poor performing buildings out there are either too big, um, they're out of proportion, the programming is, is not correct for the orientation and the best performance passively on that, that site. Uh, and therefore builders are increasing the demand on energy and increasing the cost for consumers. Um, the other thing that I do in this video is I also start looking at removing the outdoor blinds. So what I was actually trying to do in this file is get that star rating down as far as possible um, in a short amount of time just to demonstrate these effects. Um, removing outdoor blinds, especially on the west and the north on a lot of buildings, um, has quite a dramatic effect um, and quite often that's something that a lot of volume builders use to get their buildings across the line. Um, in terms of the 10 star house, um, we've actually got some automated blinds that come down on the outside on our high level windows on that big volume that I was describing. Um, and then on the east and the west to actually control that light and we've actually hooked it into automation so that the building actually thinks for itself. Um, so the importance of that and important importance of um, proving that we need better insulation on high performing envelopes which is is something that's done overseas um, is that so that we don't have to put band-aids on the rest of the house to um, address other issues that are going on. Um, in the Adelaide Hills, as I said, it's very different than the Adelaide Plains. Um, I didn't have a waffle pod loaded into this particular file, otherwise I would have um, demonstrated it, but a waffle pod on the Adelaide Plains, and we found this when we did the 10 star rating. We wanted to look at, um, you know, almost passive house principles in this house, as well as the 10 stars, and putting slab insulation doesn't work on the Adelaide Plains. It, it relies on the concrete slab on ground. Um, up in the hills, if we used a waffle pod, different story works a lot better in Melbourne with a waffle pod works a lot better um, probably same as Tasmania and maybe Canberra um, the other demonstration that I did in this video was also unsealing the exhaust fans um, so as we know there are a lot of penetrations in the envelope of a building that can really undo the performance um, so what I'm doing here is unsealing some exhaust fans and seeing the difference um, so what I did is I unsealed all the exhaust fans and then it dropped it um, essentially another 0.5 of stars. So it, it came down to 8.5 stars. Um, there is a, a new guidance in the technical note from that has that says that you've got to seal the garage doors, which is great um, because we know um, that the garage is an unconditioned space and so it's really sucking that heat that people are trying to put inside of a house through that space and making it really cold. Um, so it's really undoing what we are trying to do to the rest of the house. So not only is it important to actually seal these areas and having um, airtight construction um, or as airtight as possible without going overboard in some instances, um, it's, it's really important to try to work with your um, technical tools to actually test out these performance items. And the advantage of us being quite tech heavy at Suho is um, quite often what we do is um, when we're dealing with clients, we actually balance between um, their design intent and really try to achieve their design intent with the minimal amount of changes to it as possible. And by using these tools in the design process, we can actually um, target those areas. What was actually also funny in terms of um, testing out this was also I tested it in Mount Gambia, which I know, for instance, um, really suffers with the cold, um, extreme cold in some times of the year. And that actually dropped down the rating, uh, I think it was to 7.4, so down even further. So again, that would maybe need a waffle pod. So in our BDAV 10 star challenge, Design Matters 10 star challenge, um, what we started looking at in the 2016 winner was these highly insulated envelopes, the air gaps, whether they're ventilated or not, um, the types of membranes that we're using. And also um, very commonly in a lot of our houses, we're very strategically putting thermal mass in there. 
Um, so the advantage of the thermal mass in the building, um, not only that it rates well in first rate five, we know in practice, we, we have proof now in the 10 star house that it works very, very well uh, in some of, and in some of the other houses that we've designed. Um, but it actually means that we can leave it raw and then there's less processes inside the house, which also gives us another sustainability benefit, you know, no, no additional coatings on it. So that's, that's fantastic. Um, better indoor air quality is heightened in a lot of our houses by having this airtight construction um, and now with the 10 star house and um, its neighbouring house that we've done, um, having the additional HRV system in there is also bringing in fresh air. Um, so it's very good in terms of the longevity of the construction and actually um, making sure that people are getting the return on their investment. Um, so when we're doing the 10 star house, um, we're looking into this detail. So um, I'm a big fan of Jenny Inwards. I heard her talk in, uh, I think it was uh, Melbourne last year. Um, and she talks about how First Rate 5 is such a, a fantastic planning tool and I really clicked with her because um, I also use it in that same way. It's such a valuable tool from the word go to have a, an in-depth analysis as a designer uh, for any architect that's out there to actually have this in-depth uh, analysis of what they're doing and their cause and effect of their design decisions. Um, so from there, in terms of design development and really trying to transition through the design, concept design, um, design development into documentation, specifications, schedules and so forth, you really need to do that um, next level of analysis in terms of sustainability. So it's not enough now um, just to design for the stars. You can't just design for a star rating. We can't just, just design and promote that, you know, buildings are six stars because there are, there are other aspects that need to come into play here. Uh, one is the um, fresh air inside of a house. I know working from home, a lot of people that I've spoken to and I'm, I experience it myself, there's not enough fresh air in houses and as the insulation is being increased on houses to make them better performing, um, as hopefully I've demonstrated in that video, um, we really need to take into account um, pushing fresh air through spaces, the drying time inside of the house, how many people are in it, if there's humidity, uh, if it's not a house, if it's just a general building or an education setting, what are the cause and effect of those design decisions. Um, and you really need to be a jack of all trades, uh, which is why if you're getting an ESD consultant in, it's a very valuable tool from the word go. Um, and then you're setting yourself a bit of a library or a benchmark. Um, so we also used um, a RoboRater which was um, not only used for the windows so that we could get the right U, uh, U and SHGC value, uh, we actually also determined um, what sort of material would best work in this house. Um, so this is the final design that we set on for construction which is a little bit different than our um, competition entry but you can see just how much reverse brick is in this area. The reason why I um, played around with it as a fibre cement um, product in uh, Hubble was that I have found um, and the lessons that we have taken back from Geraldine and being uh, Sam being on site in the construction is that if we're doing reverse brick veneer inside of a house to make it high performing, uh, what we also need to consider is how it goes together on site. Um, there's much less labour involved if we're not running brickwork through where studs go and things like that. Um, so we need to have a little bit of a balance and understanding of how it actually goes together on site when we're using these tools. Um, which I can't emphasise enough just how important site administration is and facilitating that education, the two-way conversation with your builders. Um, towards the later stages of the actual 10 star house that's being built um, that is just about finished, uh, we actually switched to Accurate because um, it gave us a next level of um, technical capability to test out sustainability measures that we know in principle work, we, we all have been trained in them, um, such as the, the dark tinting on the flooring. So we actually chose a dark tinted concrete floor. Um, the kitchen bench is even dark as well to try to add that thermal mass and um, aid in the use of those spaces, especially in winter. So there's a large focus on um, 
the, the peak times of year in terms of sustainable housing, quite often it focuses on the heat waves. What it doesn't focus on and what um, there are still a lot of people that have, um, you know, seasonal death attributed to is, is cold weather. So we also need to start looking at the how we can use that thermal mass better uh, inside the building during winter to make the um, temperature remain pretty stable throughout the year. So currently um, the building, even though it's not being used at the moment, it's just about to be switched on. Um, outside it was 9 degrees the other day and then with the insulated envelope it was 19.8 uh, inside. So a perfect example of even just the building by itself working passively with that thermal mass because the windows are in and everything. Um, it's really emphasising the next step of where we need to go and I'm really hoping with this um, stimulus that's been given by the government that people are actually adopting um, some of these principles in the talks with their builders and really um, pushing for what they want in terms of their investment, you know, where they want that money invested. Um, the other thing that we've done in this house is not necessarily reflected in the software in the front end, but it is in the back end, and um, I'll get to that in a minute, is about air tightness. So uh, we were very fortunate on the 10 star house to actually have um, Geraldine who is trained overseas in passive house. She's got a lot of experience in terms of high performance housing and managing these control layers in the walls. Um, so she's actually pushed the detailing and the construction on this building beyond um, anything that we've done before and possibly any 10 star house in Australia because um, she's actually managed to get the house to a um, passive house standard for air tightness. So at the final blow door test it got 0.63 which is passive house standard um, and I believe there's still um, a one penetration that's still, be, still to be sealed so we're, we're almost there. Um, but the importance of that is because because we know this software so well um, and we're looking at it as an educational piece to actually change the industry to, to drive that transition to a more sustainable built environment, we can actually use the back end of these programs and look at the air tightness and where these um, analysis and, and where regulation needs to go essentially because of these software tools that we use. Um, so it's really, really valuable to actually have um, an ESD person in in your design process, um, quote it as part of your fees. We, we have an integrated design process, it's very unique where we are, um, and it allows us to um, not only step very comfortably through the design process, but also onto site and construction. Um, and we're continually trying to improve that communication by also educating people on site about the um, the counter effect of changing details um, in terms of these performance um, software analysis. Um, this is actually a, um, a graph that was given to us by Marco who is on the chat today um, for the 10 star house when we're actually trying to work out what the system value of the windows was um, going to be so that we could go out to estimation. Um, so you can see the little snippet of the window sizes on the left, they're not massive but they are enough to really fracture the light and make it really quite um, beautifully articulated inside of the building um, and, and give it that sense of openness that we wanted. So to try to remain with that sense of openness, we, we sent the first rate five through to Marco and what he did was this simulation using Roborator and telling us the, the cause and effect of those. Um, if we did need to change the uh, window type or size, then we could do that also. So it's a very simple um, process to use. Um, daylighting, as I said, is something that we look at early in the, the process, but the, the effect of that on demand reduction in terms of electricity and renewable um, sources is that then we can target um, artificial lighting in spaces where it's a little bit more dark, say towards the back here. Uh, the bedroom one um, now actually has the robe, well, this is from the 10 star challenge, um, so the building is a bit different to this now, but the bedroom towards the back there on the south is obviously going to be um, a lot darker, so we can target specific lighting to those areas and really use natural lighting as much as possible. We're almost at the winter solstice. So on, um, in mid-June I'll be up there taking a time-lapse video because I really want to capture this. But um, already, um, this was 13th of May, 10.30 in the morning, you can see just how much daylighting is getting into that space. 
um, which also complements this idea that you know we're working with the volumes in first rate five and so forth to actually create that living area that's really working on convection really utilizing that thermal mass and giving us the best performance out of the house without going overboard um, so in terms of the 10 star house again you can see the daylighting here um, what we also have on the house in terms of these um, other little things that I was testing out in Hubble with the, the shading and so forth um, is we actually have home automation that actually connects not only to lighting um, but external blinds so these top um, windows in the kitchen area have actually got external blinds that will come down especially in summer when, when we need the building to perform a little bit better. We have designed the eave to give as much shade as possible but then um, what we're also wanting to do is cut down on reflection maybe from a neighbour's roof at that high level or so forth. Um, so it's really important to have that study and have that level of control over the building. Um, and it is my opinion that it's actually um, making buildings last longer. It's empowering them to change hands. So if someone sells their sustainable house, they're finding that capital investment from the word go. They're getting that return when they sell the property because the house is lasting longer. Um, the technology is empowering because it's informative, it's data rich. Um, people are learning and really, really trying to create um, that dialogue in their community, community themselves, which is very important. So um, this is the lovely Jess and Geraldine at the blower door test, uh, the air tightness test uh, on the 10 star house. Um, so what we, <laughs> what we actually also found was when we first started off the test, um, first started getting the fans going, we, we realized that there was a bathroom window open and even with that window open, we still got um, a three air change per hour at 50 pascals, which was still well better than a lot of buildings on the market. Um, so once again, it, it emphasizes this notion that um, buildings need to be better insulated. We need to reach beyond those six stars and really try to increase the insulation of the building. Look at glazing specs, which are a little bit higher because glazing is essentially um, an insulated space if done correctly, um, and really work on those passive principles so they can be adapted. Um, and by having the, the um, HRV system on the house, it, it, mean, it doesn't mean that the house is designed to be closed up, that's, that's completely opposite, but it, it gives the house that sense of adaptability that we can change and manipulate and, and work with our lifestyles and work with different abilities that people have on houses. Um, so hopefully um, there are a few questions from that. We'll <laughs> We'll certainly um, try to ask them. There is a little bit delay on some of them coming through, so just let me have a look through the chat and we'll see what's there. Um, and I believe that Marco has been answering questions at the same time. So let me just have a look at the chat here, right up to the top. Okay. Um, so Marco has provided some uh, information on Roborator and um, Hubble. Um, you can also um, email us at um, studio.suho.com.au if you want an email to come through to me if you've got a question. Um, you can also send it through to Marco as well. Um, unfortunately, I neglected to put that email in there. If Marco, you could put your email at the end. Um, Vincent's. Yes, so Vincent was asking about Hubble, uh, which um, Marco has answered, but yeah, Hubble is very much for the residential sector at the moment. Um, what it is targeting, um, and targeting really, really well, is the volume of houses. So if you think um, how many volume builders there are out there that need this um, tool to empower themselves to um, be able to um, get a better product for their client at, at the same cost sometimes. Um, it is very targeted to that market at the moment. Um, I have used it on a number of different buildings um, in a number of different climate zones, especially at the engagement stage where I'm trying to quote what sort of design service um, a client wants or if we're wanting to optimise their design. Um, so it can be used very well for that as well. Um, Are these, uh, Ebony says, are these programs relatively affordable to attain and use in industry? 
um, which I think Marco would have um, the answer for that in terms of the actual pricing. Um, so Ebony, get in contact with Marco. Um, yeah, RoboRater has been used um, predominantly for research. So we have done a lot of research with um, government, um, South Australian Housing Authority, um, the federal government as well, and in terms of housing afford affordability and different case studies. Um, so RoboRater gives us the tool to actually apply all of this knowledge to multiple different scenarios which we wouldn't otherwise have. Um, in terms of the 10 star house, what I am personally really hoping is that we can take this um, file that we have of the first rate 5 file and this essentially as built documentation set, as built air tightness set. Um, and really empower them to analyze that and find out what other scenarios this could be used on and what are the uh, effects that we could start you know snowballing an in industry to get the industry going and get things more affordable so it's a really exciting time for us um, and you can probably see how passionate uh, we are about it also um... Vincent asks, are you talking to Metricon? So I'm not quite sure what um, you're referring to there, Vincent. Um, but again, just give us an email if you like. That might be the easiest way and then we can try to answer that. Um, so if you um, email studio at suho.com.au, that'll come through to me. Um, we are also going to be updating the 10 star website um, in the next couple of months as we start getting some virtual reality tools going um, start to switch the data monitoring on so we're about to go on a couple of um, heavy months of data analysis um, and cost analysis is about to start so it's a really exciting time so yes um, if you've got any other questions then please contact us but thank you for joining me today um, thank you very much to Marco as well for tuning in um, just in case there was any questions that I couldn't ask on uh, sorry, I couldn't answer on those um, programs because they, they do require a um, software development mind um, in terms of the back end of those programs. Um, but as I said, um, Hubble in particular, I was able to pick up within half an hour um, compared to some of these heavy um, programs, which is fantastic for us to be able to make that transition and make us really feel like we're making a change and educating our clients and, and facilitating and holding hands with them through that journey. So thank you everyone for joining. Um, I'll tune out now, that's probably enough talking from me, but um, look forward to seeing you in the uh, sustainable community circles around Adelaide in the coming months. Thank you.